stood tall on the wings of their dreams and vowed that nothing was going to stop them. And that was exactly the way it was for eight seasons. ABC sitcom Perfect Strangers that ran from 1986 to 1993, chronicling the relationship of Larry Appleton and his distant cousin, Balki Bartokamus, captured the hearts of viewers right from the very start. The series was the brainchild of Dale McRaven, co-creator of TV sitcom Mork and Mindy, and producers Thomas Miller and Robert Boyette. It was produced by Miller Boyette Productions in association with Lorimar Telepictures, which later became Lorimar Television. For its entire run, the show was executive produced by the duo, and Dale was executive producer with them for the first two seasons, becoming an executive consultant thereafter. William Bickley and Michael Warren, who became longtime associates of Tom and Robert, were supervising producers during seasons one through four, elevating to co-executive producers in season five, and finally executive producers with Miller and Boyette from season six through eight. In 1984, Bronson Pinchot garnered notice for his role in the action comedy film Beverly Hills Cop as Serge, an effeminate art gallery employee. When Tom and Robert pitched him as the star of their show, ABC signed on to the project. But by this time, Bronson was unavailable, as he'd taken a role in an NBC series called Sarah. Thankfully, for ABC at least, Sarah failed to find an audience and was quickly canceled. With Bronson now available, it was full steam ahead for Tom and Robert's show to go into development. Initially, comedian Louis Anderson was cast as the immigrant's American cousin. A pilot episode was put into production, but in the end, the chemistry just wasn't there. So Louis was let go. Development was placed into overdrive when the president of the network offered the producers a prime tryout slot for the spring of 1986. After running through several actors for the part of Valky's cousin, the producers ultimately chose Mark Lynn Baker, whom they'd recently seen in a guest appearance on Moonlighting. He displayed immediate chemistry with Bronson, and the series raced into production. Perfect Strangers premiered on ABC on March 25, 1986. Airing in the coveted time slot between Who's the Boss and Moonlighting, Perfect Strangers was an instant ratings hit. The theme song, Nothing's Gonna Stop Me Now, was performed by David Pomerantz. It was written by Jesse Frederick and Bennett Salve, who are also responsible for the theme songs for many other sitcoms, like Full House, and Step by Step. Larry, played by Mark, a Wisconsin native from a large family, moves into his first apartment in Chicago. His plans of living alone and enjoying his own space are thwarted when his until now unknown cousin Balki, played by Bronson, a shepherd from fictional Mediterranean line in Mipos, arrives intending to move in with him. After initially rejecting his cousin's request to stay at his apartment, aspiring photographer Larry decides to take Balki, whose knowledge of America is gleaned entirely from American television, under his wing and teach him about what living in the United States is really like. Originally airing on Tuesdays for the short six-episode first season in the spring of 1986, it moved to Wednesdays in prime time in the fall of that year. In the first season, three other main characters are introduced. Larry and Balky's boss, Donald Twinkle Twinkasetti, played by Ernie Sabella, at the Ritz Discount Store. He's also the landlord of the building Larry and Balky live in. Twinkle's wife, Edwina, played by Belita Moreno, and upstairs neighbor, Susan Campbell, played by Lise Cutter. Larry began dating Jennifer Lyons, played by Melanie Wilson, and Balky began dating Marianne Spencer, played by Rebecca Arthur, in the show's second season. In later episodes, it's revealed that both women are flight attendants who live in Larry and Balky's building. Both relationships ultimately culminate in marriage. The start of season three found Larry and Balky in a new, larger apartment, even though the characters never made reference to the move, while Jennifer and Marianne move as well and still serve as co-tenants. Larry acquires a reporter job working out of the basement of the Chicago Chronicle, a fictional metropolitan newspaper, and helps Balky get a job there in the mailroom. Balky's supervisor is mailroom head Sam Gorpley, played by Sam Anderson. The newspaper's advice columnist Lydia Markham is played by Belita Moreno in her second role on the show. Another main character that's introduced in season three is elevator operator Harriet Winslow, played by Jo Marie Payton. She makes such a significant mark over the course of the next two seasons that Perfect Strangers writers decide to create a spin-off series centered on her and her family called Family Matters. 
In March 1988, midway through the third season, ABC moved Perfect Strangers from its successful Wednesday night slot to Friday nights at 8, before Full House. This was a key development in the formation of the ABC Friday night comedy blog that later became known as TGIF. The show then moved to the 9 p.m. slot on Friday nights in the fall of 1989, during the fifth season. Shortly after the sixth season began, the producers attempted to add a child character to the show. Tess Holland, played by Allison Porter, was introduced as the little girl who lived upstairs from Larry and Balky. Strangely though, she only lasted one episode. By the fall of 1991, ABC had been reaping the rewards of the successful TGIF block and wanted to capitalize on the preteen and younger demographic for Saturday nights as well. In order to decrease competition from NBC's popular Saturday evening lineup of adult-oriented sitcoms, including The Golden Girls and Empty Nest. In the start of 1992, the network rolled out plans to launch a similar family-friendly comedy block for Saturday. It was announced that Perfect Strangers would move from TGIF to join this new lineup to help it take off. The show began airing in the 9 p.m. slot of the I Love Saturday Night block in February. It was a bad decision. The series experienced a drastic decline in ratings. So by that summer, the network moved it back to Fridays at 9.30 to fill the time slot with reruns until the new TGIF season began. ABC had initially ordered 13 episodes to be produced for the show's final season, though the network ultimately shortened it to six. The season was rated in the top 20 for the first time since the first season, with its series finale attracting 15 million households. Now let's get into some fun facts about Perfect Strangers. There were a couple of last minute changes before the show's debut. Perfect Strangers was actually the second title. It was first called The Greenhorn. In the original draft of the script, Balky was named Vev. Bronson came up with the name Balky after his sister's dog, who was named Balcony, and nicknamed Balky. The show was inspired by the Olympics. The 1984 Summer Olympics, which took place in Los Angeles, California, had over a dozen countries boycott the entire competition in retaliation for the Americans' decision to boycott the 1980 Summer Olympics alongside some of the United States' allies. The controversy surrounding the boycott led to a rise in American patriotism and also many conversations about cultural, political, and social clashes. The producers of Perfect Strangers were amused by watching foreign athletes try to navigate American culture. And thus, the entire setup of the show was born. While the producers thought they had a great idea on their hands, it was initially rejected by all three major commercial television networks at the time, NBC, CBS, and the network it eventually aired on, ABC. While ABC loved the premise and script for Perfect Strangers, executives thought the show might get lost in the wave of new shows premiering that fall of 1986. Instead, they proposed producers quickly assemble six episodes to debut in winter 1986 as a mid-season replacement. In order to do this, episodes were taped in record time, with one show airing just one week after it had first been rehearsed. Balky ending up coming from the made-up country of Mipos was purely for the benefit of the show. The reason the show opted out of using a real country was that they didn't want to inadvertently offend any fans. The chemistry between Mark and Bronson was so good on screen because from day one, minute one, they bonded so well that they could finish each other's sentences. Bronson claims that he never once wore underwear while playing the role of Balky Bartokomos. While never a massive hit, the ratings for Perfect Strangers remain steady throughout its long run, usually ranking among Nielsen's top 40 programs for its first six seasons. Tom Cruise actually discouraged Bronson from doing TV. This happened after the two worked on Risky Business together. Tom even floated Bronson alone when he realized Bronson was low on funds. Bronson told Tom, though, that unlike him, he wasn't in a position to turn down jobs. An on-set accident involving the two lead actors found themselves heading to the emergency room after. In episode two of season four, there was a scene where Larry was trying to make Balky mad to show he needed to follow a particular method he learned in an assertive seminar to get a raise at his job. During the first take, Bronson grabbed Mark by the shoulders to shake him. He pushed Mark back, then forward, their heads connected, and Mark hit the floor. A few seconds later, Bronson followed suit. When their heads connected though, his tooth went into Mark's forehead. Bronson said that for the rest of the show, whenever his tongue hit his tooth, he saw stars. They went to the emergency room right after the show, and Mark had one stitch, while Bronson later needed to have a root canal. 
For the first three seasons, as a brief salute to its parent series, in the opening credits of Family Matters, the Winslow family is shown riding bicycles over the Ur of Cupsonet Bridge as seen from exactly the same vantage point as in the opening Perfect Strangers sequence. Perfect Strangers was poised to collaborate with its spinoff, but it didn't materialize. Plans had been made for both Larry and Balky to have a cameo on the Family Matters pilot. Apparently, it was filmed, but for some reason, it never aired. After a studio taping, Mark and Bronson would field audience questions. In many cases, someone would ask them to do the Dance of Joy, Balky's signature piece of performance art to celebrate good fortune. They would usually do it. When the taping of the finale episode wrapped, they did the Dance of Joy for the studio audience one last time. During a 2021 Page Six interview, Bronson revealed that he was quite depressed during his Perfect Strangers days. He also stated that part of the problem was that he couldn't break free of an unhappy relationship. He knew he needed therapy, but didn't get any until after the show went off the air. That ended up being a not so good decision, as when he finally did go, his therapist told him how shocked he was that he survived as long as he did without professional help. One not-so-fun fact was revealed by Rebecca Golden, who played Balky's girlfriend-turned-wife, Mary Ann Spencer, in a 2020 interview with blog, Perfect Strangers Reviewed. She was asked what her relationship with the cast was like. She had nothing but positive things to say about Mark, Melanie, Sam, Belita, and Joe Marie. She didn't say anything about Bronson. As the interview went on, though, she finally did decide to address the elephant in the room, saying, if you have wondered why I haven't said anything about Bronson, it's because I adhere to the old adage that if you can't say anything nice about someone, then don't say anything at all. But the truth is there are some nice things I can say about him. He was a true Jekyll Hyde. In the beginning, he was so sweet and fun to work with. But as we got further into the success of the show, he morphed into a monster. I was the one member of the cast that seemed to draw his wrath. It was quite the paradox living my dream of being on a sitcom but subjected to being sexually assaulted by him regularly. At the time, there was nothing I or anyone else could do about it. He held all the cards. Now you would think an accusation like that would get more traction in the media, but for whatever reason, it appears that nothing more was reported about it. Warner Brothers Domestic Television Distribution distributed the series for broadcast television syndication from 1990 to 1997. In 2008, Warner Home Video released seasons one and two of Perfect Strangers on DVD in North America, Latin America, and Europe. A representative for Warner Archive Collection indicated on a social media post in 2017 that the remainder of the series would be released on DVD, with a formal announcement to be made in the near future. Seasons three through six were released in 2018, with seasons seven and eight released in 2019. Perfect Strangers can currently be seen by renting or purchasing individual episodes or whole seasons on Amazon, iTunes, and Google Play.